and we uh, set up the center, and we got members of the youth in the community to be a part of the center. And we had different distinguished speakers, and we had activities in the center, and we did many things. And one day, when I was coming home from the center, I got on the bus. Now, they had, at that time, they had a section for black and white people on the bus. The uh, white people sat in front, and the black people sat two or three seats behind, and usually there were never enough seats. This particular bus had a line up the top where it had white in front and colored behind. But that day, they had a board that was behind that line that said white on one side and colored on the other. But there were no more seats in that section. And we sat down in front of the board, but behind the line. And when white people got on there that needed a seat, they told us to get up. And we wouldn't do it. And the man went into some place and stopped and got the police. And they happened to get a police that was very brutal man. And he kicked me and hit me with a blackjack, and I was arrested along with another fellow who was a friend of mine, but a steel worker in that community. Two other fellows were arrested. And they put us in jail, and I couldn't call anybody. So I spent the night in jail. When he got in the jail house, I remember the cop took a blackjack, and he hit me two or three times with that. He hit me until I confronted him and asked me if he was crazy. And I guess he thought I was going to attack him. So he stopped. The jailhouse, I have never seen so much filth. The roaches wasn't afraid of you. They just walked around the floor and the walls and the bed. I never slept that night. I sat up on the bed in the jail. And they sent some of the women, black women, who worked in the jail to try to get out of me what I was or who I was. One woman in particular, I remember, I don't remember her name, but she came up and she asked me what did I belong to, who, who I was, pretending to be angry, but really stooling for the jail. When I went to court the next morning, I managed to pay one of the prisoners who was a trusty sort of who went out and bought things to call my lawyer, the same Mr. Stokes, so that he was there when my trial came up the next morning. They brought us biscuits and molasses for breakfast. 
I didn't eat it. And that morning, in solidarity, a whole lot of people didn't eat it. I realized that that wasn't really a good thing to do. But maybe it was, because those who were in prison had to eat that every day. And because I knew I would be out, I guess I was just angry and didn't eat it. And they didn't eat it that morning. And coffee they brought us. Didn't drink coffee. And we went to trial. And of course, I was found guilty of resisting arrest and this and that, even though I had been beaten by the cop. What I should have done was sh pulled up my skirts and showed them the bruises on my legs, but the lawyer was timid, and he didn't want to put on a demonstration, and he was the only person that I had there to stand with me, and so I didn't. I was released that day. I think it was fined a hundred dollars and released. And of course, we kept fighting that case. We lost in the end. But I spoke in several places throughout Alabama. I remember speaking in, Bur in, in Montgomery at Reverend Martin Luther King's church, senior church. And Martin Luther Jr. was then a young boy who later organized the march in Birmingham, the bus boycott. And he wrote books and used many of the phrases because James Jackson wrote a pamphlet. I don't have one anymore because They've been confiscated and all the things that they, the McCarthy period and then the FBI's coming in your house and stealing, they've all been put away. We don't have one, none of us. And many of the slogans in that struggle were used from that pamphlet. I don't know if he took them from it or he made them up himself. I can't say that. But I'm sure the seed was planted then, sort of. Of course, other people resented that sort of practice because it was all over the South where black people had to sit in the back and stand and white people sat in the front. And it got so bad that to the point that people resented black people passing through the front. And some people would pay their money in front and then go back to the back and get in the bus. I wouldn't do that. Many people wouldn't do that personally, but... but People, many people did. 